One of the things I really like about 3D printing is the ability to create really professional looking results. And in this case, I'm gonna replace this switch cover. I installed this three-way switch for my dust collector so I could be manually on, manually off, or be controlled by a remote control. Unfortunately, the button that I've got was a weird size and I could not find any cover plates that had that same opening size that weren't plastic. And every time I'd try to take a plastic one and put it on a box and then mount the switch to it, the switch would inevitably crack the housing while I was trying to use it. So this seemed like a great opportunity for me to use 3D printing. So instead of using a standard electrical box with a switch cover and then trying to mount that, I went ahead and just created a flat plate with the correct size opening for the switch, a couple flanges to mount. I can either use those with adhesive strips or I can just run screws through them. It should be real easy. And I went ahead and engraved the on, the off, and remote text into the part. Now, I've never really done this kind of engraving before, and I want to fill it in with paint. I found a great article on the MarkForge website that talked about using this particular paint. These are paint sticks, so they're almost completely solids. So as they dry, they don't shrink a lot. Because I've never done engraving before, I wanted to do a test before I ran my real part. Because if I mess up, I don't want to have to try to clean and repaint the new part or have to reprint that part. So what I'm going to do is create a unit tester. Now unit testing is great if you have a feature that you're interested in learning more about, but you don't want to have to print an entire part along with the feature on that part in order to test that feature. So simply create a smaller version that has only the information you need and now you can go test it. In this case, not only did I choose a couple of different fonts, I also created steps of various different depths, starting from a thousandth from the top and working my way down to a thousandth from the bottom. I kind of wanted to see what was an optimal depth. So I printed this tester and started marking it with these paint sticks. And it did a pretty good job on the middle ones, which is about what I picked, the 50 thousandths deep on text that was about 200 thousandths tall. The ones that are too thin didn't fill in and it looked like they were gonna be able to fall out really easily. The ones that were thicker than that took a long time to fill in and I'm not sure I ever really got it all the way filled in. Now in this case, I was able to test a couple of different colors as well. But I definitely recommend whatever paint you decide to use, just create a really simple test part, try it out and see how it works, mess around with it, fail often with that unit tester, and then put the final one to work. So here it is fully installed. I used Velcro to put it on there, that way I could easily take it off again if I needed to make any adjustments or modifications. Seems like I'm always tweaking with this dust collector. It also kind of makes a mess all around the lettering, so clean that off with either a damp cloth or better yet, use acetone, mineral spirits, some kind of a heavy solvent. Uh, that's not going to affect that onyx material at all. Indelible markings like this can indicate part numbers or which part numbers are to be used with this type of tooling. It could also give instructions to the end user or process parameters. So consider adding engraved text or embossed text to your next 3D printed part. It's going to really make that an easy part to identify and to use down the line.